Hello and welcome to today's Partner Infopedia web conference. This is Fast Track Dynamics 365 for Operations Tech Talk. Today's topic, reporting options. Presenting for us today from Microsoft, we have Senior Program Manager, TJ Vassar. TJ, over to you. directly with customers and I sincerely value uh, each of these chances to, to talk to customers, share our story, um, and give you an opportunity to help improve the story of the future. Um, so today we're talking about reporting options in uh, Dynamics 365 for operations. Uh, my name is TJ Vassar. Uh, as was mentioned, I'm a senior program manager here on the business intelligence team. Um, I've been working on this project for almost eight years now. I've been in the BI space, and I've seen a tremendous uh, evolutionary growth, um, especially over the last few years. Um, and today, I just want to talk about some of the reporting options um, and go through some experiences we offer in the product and sort of uh, fill you in on some of the plans we have to uh, improve our offering and, and further invest in the services we provide today. Uh, so this is just an agenda overview. You got all these details, but here's uh, really the stuff that I'll be focusing on today. Uh, I have quite a bit of content uh, with only an hour to present, so I will spend more time on some areas over others. Um, I, it, it's with this forum. Um, I usually uh, feed off of customer engagements, interactions. Uh, I really appreciate any customers or comments I receive along the way, and I'll do my best to address those uh, promptly. Um, but we'll focus today on just some highlights of what's available today. Um, I, what My real goal here overall is to empower you to be able to formulate um, a, a legitimate reporting strategy for your solutions going forward. Um, it's important that, uh, unlike in the past, people plan out their reporting needs up front as part of the uh, planning process. And um, just understanding what options are available in terms of user experience um, is important in making sure you're, you're taking or uh, you're recommending the right solutions given customer requirements. Uh, so sweet, we'll start off with just an understanding of the journey, the journey from data to intelligent insights. Uh, I'll venture in, I'll do some demos showcasing some reporting experiences. Uh, then I'll switch over to some uh, previews of some functionality that we will be releasing in the spring release. Uh, hopefully I'll have some time to discuss some, some patterns, general patterns we found in BI solutions overall. Um, this will be a chance for a lot of you techie folks to, to get in behind the scenes and say, and figure out you know, how do I take advantage of, of maybe some solutions I have today. Um, and at the end, I'll also give you some pointers to resources, uh, blog sites, uh, articles of interest that uh, will help you um, build the story that you're going to see today. So that's a lot. Let's let's go ahead and get started. Um, so I'll, this is a slide we use to sort of uh, engage with customers to make it clear that you know we all reside someplace on this roadmap. Um, some customers are further along than others, um, but we all can identify some layer here of, yeah, this is most of my solutions fall into this category. So we'll work our way up here. Um, and if you go back to the early 2000s, the, the late 90s, and you look at the ERP solutions then, um, you'll see that pretty much if you talked about a report and an ERP solution, what you would get is an output, uh, either through a document or just um, a live stream of an Excel spreadsheet. Um, and what that represented is that that was a static report. That was a snapshot of data. Uh, for the most part, it was usually seeded by input parameters or user context. Uh, but it is something that would be generated based on the current state of the system, it's current state of data, um, you know, what, what the conversion rates are at that moment. That's, that's what would affect the output of that, of that report. And at that point, you'd get a document or you'd get something else, you'd hand that off to someone or they'd have a stack of them on their desk, and they'd figure out you know, what to do with that data, how to respond to the report information they got. So that what we would call that, you know, the, it's a high reliance on manual interaction there. The system, all it does is it structures the data in a way that you've requested. Now, if you go up a level, then you kind of start to veer into where we were um, investing in with, Dyna uh, with Dynamics uh, AX 2012. 
And that was giving you more of a persona-based dashboard experience, somewhere where you had some interactive visuals, charts, things that you can slice and play around with the data um, and, and sort of discover things on your own. Now, this is a very powerful tool, and a lot of people are very, uh, are very much dependent on having powerful ad hoc tools um, and interactive dashboards so they can toy around with the data and discover things that are, are not uh, obvious in just looking at uh, raw data. So interactive dashboards are very much in play now. They're, they're pretty much uh, commonplace in ERP systems. Um, it, it's hard to find one that doesn't app, uh, offer some sort of dashboard experience. Now, if you go up another level, then this is starting to talk about where we're, we're venturing in now. This is the area we're making a lot of investments in right now. Um, this, this has to do with taking uh, advantage of machine learning algorithms um, and you know, some Cortana analytic services that allow us to do some bulk analysis on large swaths of data um, using cloud resources. Um, so this goes further into not only understanding how the data is functioning as it exists today, but sort of anticipating what's going to happen uh, given past trends um, and, and other related information, perhaps weather affects how customer sales um, um, work out in the past. And you use predictions to understand that and sort of help you graduate to the next level, which is automating decision making. Um, so you can get predi predictions out of the system and then have someone respond to that, or you can start to build tools around the predictions themselves um, and add some automation to uh, essentially respond automatically um, if it detects that you have low inventory or you have the likelihood of, of having low inventory given an oncoming storm. Um, you might want a system in place that will uh, on its own detect that and um, you know um, request a, a larger inventory so that you're covered there. So those are decision making, some automated decision, and again, this is where you get into Cortana Analytics. You get some ML, you get some machine learning algorithms, and you potentially integrate some uh, advanced services like Flow uh, to take action on that information. So of course, yeah, at the very far side, you're, you're effectively going from data on the left to action on the right. And depending upon the scenario, you'll fall into one of these categories and we'll, we're providing you with tools to uh, accomplish all of these needs. So yeah, along this journey, uh, it's important to understand where, where you fall today. Um, and I like to break open or sort of double click that first line of, of hey, how do, if I just need access to some well-structured data, um, I run a business, you know, I, I'm not into ad hoc yet. I haven't really gotten to the point where I'm ready to, to take advantage of core time analytics to, um, to involve some machine learning. But I just need reports, and I need to understand what I can do with the system as, it's, as it comes to me on day one. And what we're showing you right now are the tools that we provide out of box um, that supply just the most basic standard reporting um, experiences in the application. And I'll, I'll show you some of the, the differences between these different um, types of reporting experiences in the app. So the first one we like to talk about is built-in experiences. These are things that are built off of native controls in the app. Uh, these are developer-authored uh, solutions, charts, embedded charts, um, maybe tiles or you know cues. These sort of things that are built in and they you know surface to life the data that's most relevant to you. Um, those are developer authored tools and we have a, you know, a slew of, of standard controls that we provide that allow you to build those experiences into the app. Uh, the next one over is SSRS reports, business documents. You have the ability to transact with this ERP system. You need to produce a document that you can email to someone directly or print um, or just create a PDF file. Um, well, we rely on SSRS as our document generation solution. It's for high volume document creation, um, you know, non-interactive batch executions. Um, SSRS is really the, the, the solution there. Uh, for, and of course, for financial statements, we offer MR, and um, that has been really well integrated into the app. They've added support for drill throughs from MR into actual AX forms, so that you can transition from financial statements um, into some of the detail records. Um, and we're doing more investments there to even expand uh, the capabilities uh, in terms of reporting with MR. 
Um, the new one on the block is this, what we call general electronic reporting. And this is a very powerful tool. I highly recommend that folks who deal with multi-national uh, deployments find out more about this tool. Um, it's ideal for those reports that are geared towards regulatory bodies, uh, interest stat reports, tax reports, checks even, uh, things where the regulatory body can receive an electronic um, format of the data and you know respond to that. That's where general electronic reporting comes in. Um, if I were to sort of explain it in a nutshell, it's a configuration-based solution that allows you to sort of, using expressions, describe the output. Um, and you can really, you know, run wild with this so that you can have um, solutions that are specific to um, an industry um, in a given region. Um, they've also got a solution where they're, they're allowing folks to create these uh, reports and share them with others so that you're not having to create, you know, the tax report um, for Lebanon or, or some other country where it's really specific to that area. Uh, so general electronic reporting, uh, very new tool, uh, very powerful to create international-based solutions. Um, so I got a question, that was, uh, I think it's relevant on this slide, so I'll go ahead and, and jump to it. And it asks, uh, the question was from Gary, and the question was, where would distribution label printing fall within these categories? Uh, distribution label printing. So um, great question. This is a very specific, hey, your scenario, this is a, a report scenario in the app, and you're trying to find out which one of these boxes best suits those needs. Um, you'll really need to tease apart the experience to ensure that you're on the right track. And the questions you want to ask is, uh, okay, who, who needs access to this tool? Is this a restricted tool? Does it need to be uh, restricted based on AX, uh, D365 security? If so, yeah, you want to build an integrated solution here. Um, what, how, how do they want to access this thing? Do they want something to the screen? In this case, I see that you're generating something that you'd like to print, or which is very imp informative on which experience or tool is right for you. Um, but you also want to find out, okay, what actions are, gonna, are they going to want to take with the output? Are they going to email this? Are they going to take it to Excel just so they can play and slice the data? Um, in this case, it sounds like you're printing it so that you can distribute it in hard copy. Um, and for those solutions where you rely on a printed copy, um, the, first, I, the first solution that comes to mind is SSRS because it has... Um, batch and network printing capabilities built into it. However, it is not the only tool that's capable of, pr of producing a printable uh, document. So uh, again, I, I don't like to, just from a brief one-liner, give you a recommended solution, uh, but those are the kinds of things you'll want to call out in terms of understanding which route to recommend. Um, if you're talking about network printers or printing at high volume, SSRS is definitely the solution you're, want, you're going to want to go with. Uh, however, if you're talking about producing a document that the browser can then print locally, um, your options are a little bit more broad. Okay, so I got another question, but I'm going to keep going. I'll jump back. I don't want to get too caught up on this because I think when I start to show you some of the reporting experiences, it'll speak to some of these questions you have. Um, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time here because uh, this slide is really intended for um, ISV providers, solution providers, those folks that want to take those next steps of, hey, I don't want to just do static reports anymore. I want to break free of that, and I want to start to gravitate towards some of these cloud services that rely on Cortana Analytics, um, machine learning, cognitive services, Power BI. Um, so I have this slide just as a reference slide to inform you of some of the tools out there to satisfy the needs. Um, so I'll kind of speak to this a little bit. On the left here, you have your data collection. Um, and with Dynamics 365 for Operations, we have two central stores of data. There's your transactional data, which is in your operational DB. And then there's your reporting data, the data that you want to capture for analytical tools, Power BI, uh, just asynchronous processing. Um, you would populate in the entity store. Um, so. Uh, when I say populate, we have a lot of tools where you're effectively just defining um, star schemas, semantic models, and we take care of the population for you. 
Um, again, I don't want to go too far into that. I just wanted to show that there's two databases that you need to be concerned with. There's the transactional database. That's what's read-write, CRUD operations. That's what the client is interacting with. What there's also as part of your solution is this entity store database. And that's what Power BI, Cortana Analytics, and all these external solutions are sourcing their views from. So uh, in the middle, you have some of your intelligence engines. These are cloud-hosted services. They're able to feed off of both of these data sources. However, we recommend that you try to source your data from the entity store. That, that, that is really the mechanism to use for any external extraction of AX data. Um, and then I'm just going to go over here on the right. These are different tools and ways of presenting these, this information or processing this data for people. Um, and these are other tools that you can use for, you know, automatically processing the data that comes through these channels. All right, cool. So, yeah, I want to spend a few minutes uh, not just talking about the application, but actually showing you some various reporting experiences in the app. So uh, I don't know how long this has been sitting here, so I'm just going to refresh this. Um, and what I have here is this is a preview of a, a recent released platform update five uh, with the 7.1 uh, app suite built on top of it. Uh, so this is 7.1, which is the fall release of AX uh, application built on top of Plaid Update 4, which has been released. I think it comes up this week, actually. So I think it came out last week, as a matter of fact. So um, yes, it is out because I just got this on LCS. So things you see today are possible with the environments you have access to today. Um, I didn't bring in any kind of um, you know, external or VNext solutions here. I just built some solutions on top of the platform. So uh, I'm going to assume most of the folks in this call are quite familiar with the Dynamics 365 for Operations shell. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about the, the standard views in the app. Um, so what you're looking at right now is this is the dashboard. This is, I call this the launch pad. That's probably not the right name, but it's what I call it. Um, each of these, it's like a hub, it's an app hub. Each of these icons takes you into um, a workspace. Uh, workspaces, as you probably know, are geared towards a specific uh, work stream in, in, um, in a target market, potentially. So uh, these are very focused views of, of business data. Um, so I'll just jump into one of the ones we, sh we provide as a sort of a, a test bed uh, um, of showcasing what's available in the platform. So this is a workspace, and it's got some built-in visuals in it that, you know, these are built-in reports. These are structured views of data that are based on transactional data or, you know, uh, analytical views of transactional data. Um, and right away, it throws up numbers and data that's relevant to the persona that uses this workspace. Um, in this case, I'm a reservation management person. Um, so I work for Fleet, uh, which is a car rental agency. Um, so this is sort of the data that I would feel would be relevant to me. Um, so it's got my quick actions, how I would add a new rental or get to the customers. I've got some KPIs I've defined that I can service here just to make sure that we're on track with our goals. These are all forms of reports built into the app with native, uh, app with native controls. Um, you've got some more reports here. These are actually... Uh, embedded charts that are sourced from our aggregate measurements. Um, so these views are sourced from our aggregate views um, and just provided so that you know you can get some interactive views of data. Um, these are actionable. These are you can intercept data points. You can you know respond to user clicks by navigating to detailed record forms. Um, so with these internally built solutions. They're based off of a foreign data source. Um, so you developers out there, that should clue you in as to the type of or the level of control you have over this information. You can do filtering. It responds to contextual information on the workspace. Um, all of that comes with these things. So contrast that to another section I have here. These are different types of visuals. Um, these are source. These are also analytical visuals. 
However, unlike these, which are defined by a developer, um, I added these myself as a personalization. Um, so this is sort of a segue into our Power BI integration. Um, if you come back to my slide here where I left off, um, we talked about all of these four types of technologies. Uh, the one uh, that really deserves the most attention, and I, I didn't even dis skip it entirely, is this big box on the right, which is Power BI integration, uh, which is the tool we use now for data exploration um, and integration of external data feeds. Um, so I'll jump back here really fast because that's an important point, um, that this is us integrating um, the cloud service into your D365 for operations uh, application. These views come from my powerbi.com subscription. These are things that have been shared with me either through the organization or that I have myself authored based on data I have access to. Um, so if you have not played around with Power BI um, or if it's a new area to you, I highly recommend going out to powerbi.com today or anytime you have 10 to 15 minutes just to play around with the tools. Um, the sales pitch for Power BI is it is powerful analytical tools which are designed for business users so that we're no longer uh, so dependent on developers to produce these visualizations. Um, developers, we hope, give empower business users through access to data, and business users will then take that, that information and produce these actionable views. Um, so I won't spend too much time here. I, what I'll just say is these are hosted on PowerBI.com. I can come in. I can, if there are other visuals that um, someone in my organization shares with me, or you know that I stumble across that I find interesting. Maybe there's some um, weather feed data that would be relevant to this reservation management uh, individual. I can go out and create those content, those visuals, and then plug them into this workspace. Um, so yeah, it's 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 effectively just me selecting which visuals I care to include here. So that's another type of embedded visual. Um, so those are two basic types. Now, if you want to go on to something that's a little different, um, and this is a little more traditional, uh, these are business documents, and you know business documents are for the most part driven through user parameters. Um, so you can consume these by default. They come as uh, an HTML presentation screen. Uh, however, you have access to sysquery form for a lot of reports or just you know natural filters for the reports that make sense. Um, but the output is something very different. It's a, a fully fledged document that is ready to go. This is something that you can you know directly export to PDF to create a document that you could share with others. Here, sorry, popped up on my other screen. Um, of course, in a lot of cases, you can you know get your browser to just, uh, upon running the report, uh, directly launch that PDF document um, in another tab window. Um, and we recommend that. That sort of experience is for cases where you know, for the most part, people are printing on local printer devices. Uh, if you have a customer base where, you know, they, they depend on network printers or they do a lot of reporting on mobile devices that don't have direct access to printers, um, at that point, you're going to want to start to consider things like um, deploying a document routing agent. Um, I'm not going to talk a lot about the DRA. Document routing agent is our tool. It's a it's a little daemon, daemon application that you install. You download it from the web app client. And it allows you to reference network connected devices from your web application. Um, so again, that's specific to those customer scenarios where they need network printer access or they interact with reports um, from devices that don't have access to printers. But for those customers that mostly interact with the application on a laptop, and rely on local devices, we highly recommend considering um, just defaulting reports to, instead of launching to screen, go directly to a PDF file. Um, of course, the end user can come in and change that decision, 
um, at any point. So if I came in and I said, hey, I, I just prefer to always get this as a PDF file. So I'll go ahead and run that report. So what it does is it, instead of navigating you away, it tells the service, hey, go render a document on behalf of this user and deliver it to them directly as a file so they can take action on it locally. Um, and again, so I, I what I showed you was me as an end user deciding this is the way I'd like to receive that content. However, you can, through customizations, automatically choose the, the print destination that's appropriate for that customer deployment. So that's a document style report. That's one style of a document style report. Um, let's go ahead and look at another one. And this is probably a more common case. Um, so there are two other reporting experiences uh, that were on that list. Uh, I'll show you the three, but there's also the electronic reporting and uh, uh, management reporter. I'm not going to do any demos for those. Those really deserve and I believe they'll have sessions of their own. They're very powerful tools, and I simply can't cover um, enough of their capabilities in the time I have with you today. So I'll just highlight what their strengths are and recommend to you to find out more information uh, about those tools um, if they're speaking to the needs of your customer. <laughs> so I'm going to show you the how in Dynamics 365 for Operations you manage a business document which is a very common thing. Um, so you're probably very familiar with this process. I'm going to go ahead and just post um, a sales order. And part of this, me transacting this sales order, is that it produces output for me, something that a receipt, a document that um, in a lot of cases I'll archive or I'll deliver to the customer or I'll keep internally. Um, so this is sort of a document publishing scenario. And if you'll notice, you'll see that the, the, the look and feel of this report is slightly different from uh, perhaps what you're accustomed to if you're, if you're familiar with 2012. Um, so I'll come back to this, and we'll talk a little bit more about uh, why this document looks this way and how you can affect the look and feel without um, any developer customizations. So that was a business document, um, and come back to this. Okay, cool. So that's all stuff. Um, this is all things you can do today. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, but what you'll be seeing here, uh, there's one more reporting experience, but I'll come back to that. So here's what's coming uh, this spring release. So it's hard to suggest it this way because a lot of the stuff that I'm going to show you right now is available in Plaid Update 4. Uh, we just are investing in application solutions that take advantage of these, um, and they'll start to show up in the spring release. So one of the things that you'll find, and um, one of the areas I highly recommend a, a resource to follow is uh, roadmap.dynamics.com. Uh, and it is a place we are actively engaged with these days in terms of sharing what our plans on, where, where our developers are investing their time, and sort of where we're looking next. Um, so you really get a lot of preview insights there, um, a lot of uh, early announcements as to plans for, uh, you know, changes that will likely affect you. Um, and it's also your opportunity to uh, submit requests or, or find ways to submit requests for enhancements to the platform or applications. Um, so one of the things you'll see highlighted in that, in that uh, service today uh, are analytic workspaces. And just the promise they offer in terms of really enriching uh, customers in terms of being informed on BI. Uh, just in, in, in very interviewing customers, it, it, it was clear to us that, you know, BI was essential. However, it was um, sort of a limited, restricted resource, uh, which is interesting to us um, because, you know, we talked to people in the company, and they, they acknowledged that BI would be useful for every uh, person in the organization. Um, however, it, because of its cost to deliver 
and often burden on the system. Um, access to BI is relatively restricted. Um, so we're trying to uh, uh, fix that problem, cross that bridge, and, and really coming up with an analytical story that um, you can secure and that you can use with confidence that it's not going to um, start to cause performance degradations on your, your uh, production environment. Um, so those are two of our really focused um, areas. Those are sort of themes for any of the features and services we add to the platform. Um, so analytical workspaces are just, yeah, democratized BI. Um, and I'll show you a little bit about what that is and what that means going forward. Um, what that offers is additional what-if scenarios, things, uh, uh, the ability to not only look at high-level insight, uh, high-level analytics, but take action, drill down into the details. So go from Power BI um, into filtered details records or lists in uh, Dynamics 365 for operations. Um, so those are, those are just really important functions for an integrated reporting service. Um, so we've built that into Power BI, and now we are sort of surfacing it as the ad hoc solution, analytical solution for Dynamics 365. Um, and the big, most important thing that's uh, for folks out there is probably this last line, which is we've improved our licensing or around our Power BI integration. Um, and to take advantage of what I will show you today, there is no additional license required. Um, so if you want the .com integration, you know, they have a free license. Um, you can absolutely personalize the app and bring in those views. Um, they also offer a pro license, so you can get some of that advanced functionality. Um, however, that is only necessary to support the .com features um, like personalization. What I'm going to show you today is how Power BI can be used as a, you know, a it can be an actual part of the application, something that you author along with the application and publish with it as well. Um, it takes away a lot of your responsibility in terms of managing customer subscriptions, um, and you actually empower the user to take advantage of existing Dynamics 365 uh, concepts to secure uh, their views. You access them through AX menu items. Um, I can filter data based on user uh, permissions. Um, these are things that are must-haves for an integrated reporting solution, um, and that's what we've built with, around Power BI Embedded. Uh, let me take a quick break rail really fast here. i got some questions here, and I, I think they're worth uh, speaking to. So I have one first here from Tommy, and it says, with this included Power BI license, will we still be able to load the Power BI reports outside operations or only inside operations? Could the reports be presented in, i.e., Microsoft Teams? Got it. Will the Power BI reports load? So I'm going to read into this a little bit, and that word load is, is throwing me a little bit. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I, I think you're asking whether or not reports authored for Dynamics 365 for operations using the embedded service are accessible outside of the client application? And the answer to that is, today the answer is no. Um, today the answer is no. There is no .com where you can just go from some external browser window and see the reports that are authored through the, the Power BI um, embedded service. Um, again, I just want to stress that's the story today. However, we are working hard to really seamlessly uh, allow folks to transition solutions from the .com service and to the embedded service and back and forth. So going forward, you'll see a lot of advancements in this area. Um, but today, the answer is no. The only way you can access a report using the Power BI embedded service is through the app. Um, so I have one more here. It's for Tommy, and it says you can add Power BI to the for operations. So Tommy, uh, so would be very cool to be able to, to do the same with reports pulling data from operations. Completely agreed. Um, today you can add reports from .com to Teams. Um, going forward, we are absolutely making um, inroads to ensure that you'll be able to do similar uh, functions, actions with those reports, which are based on the Power BI embedded service. So, absolutely. 
cool. Um, all right, so uh, let's continue on with this. We're we're doing good. Uh, analytical workspaces. So before I go there, yeah, before I go there, I think I'd like to spend a couple of minutes sort of showing you So I'm going to jump now into another type of reporting experience. So I talked a little bit about um, embedded analytics, things built with the native controls. Um, I talked a little bit about SSRS sort of business documents and those operational reports that you can just access from uh, menu items. Um, we went into JIR, uh, a little bit about MR. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, Power BI. And for this stretch, uh, sorry, I, was, I showed you a little bit about our .com integration. This stretch I'm going to talk about specifically our Power BI embedded service. This is, this, I, and I call it that right now, and I probably will stop using that verbiage here pretty soon. Um, because it is my goal to avoid you having to think of this as a separate service. Um, we are trying our best, and we're making some really deep um, investments in sort of blurring that line between, hey, where am I working with um, a Power BI feature versus a Dynamics 365 for operations feature? I don't ever want you to have to think about that. So what we're doing is we're, we're in our deployment solutions taking care of all of the reasons you would need to understand that there is a separation or the fact that some of these visualizations are um, – are provided by a cloud hosted service. Um, so I'll talk a little about that, but I just want you to know that up front. Um, these are built in analytics that are authored using a Power BI desktop application. That's a more accurate way of describing what it is you're seeing here. So let me talk a little bit through what that means. What I did to create this, actually, I can't take credit for this. Uh, we have my friend on the phone, Heidi, um, and her team spent a lot of time and energy working on this. This is fantastic. And this is sort of an example of what you'll be seeing soon in some of our first-party apps um, coming forward that will be released here soon. Um, but what this is is this is a, a an analytical report sourced off of the Entity Store, which is authored using Power BI Desktop. Now that's the most accurate and complete way I can describe for you what you're what you're seeing here today. Now, what happens after you author that content in the Power BI Desktop? That's really uh, the the area where we're making investments. It's it's sort of I wouldn't say it's kludgy at the moment, um, but it's there is some manual interactions or operations you have to do as a developer to stitch these things together. Uh, the bar is very low. Uh, I won't go too deep into the developer responsibilities here, um, but I can say for the most part, your responsibility ends with creating AX metadata to reference the Power BI content. So I'll talk through the how you how you sort of build the solution. Um, you can imagine I have I am a business user or a developer. I have gone to LCDS. And I said, hey, I need a one-box environment so that I can build some Dynamics 365 for operations uh, solutions. For this scenario, my goal is to build an analytical solution, one that's purely offering some analytical views on top of data that comes out of Dynamics 365 for operations. So I am a developer or business user that's familiar with sort of the business schema of the entity store. That's, that's who I am. That's where I come from. That's all you need to know about me. That's enough to understand what um, what actions I'm going to be taking or, or my background. So I've gone to LCS. I've gotten a one-box environment, spun it up, started cool, everything's working. Now I'd like to author some of these analytical views. And what you're looking at here is this is literally uh, a Power BI report 
Um, it's got all the interactions. We've hidden some of the filter capabilities, but I can totally come in here and play with this stuff. Um, not seeing it over. Doesn't do well over these broadcasts or Skype, so it's hard to see. But as I click things, I'm able to filter the entire view of this data. Um, so at this point, the embedded service um, does not support custom visuals. However, they are investing in making sure that comes available as well. I, I'm sorry, that's not true. We have a custom visual here. So you can also author custom visuals with the embedded service as well. Um, you'll see here, There's this is a Power BI report. They have access to the different tabs. Uh, one of the things I liked about this report is pretty interesting, is it makes interesting some pretty innocuous data, data that you wouldn't normally like to look at or play around or that is sometimes difficult to access just becomes natural. Um, and this is a view of employee data, and it just gives you an idea of, um, of, 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 of you know, how long people have been at the company. Um, this is a, a great matrix. I can play around with this. I can just say, hey, I just want to look at the folks who have been here between two and five years. Um, it's just an awesome way to toy around the data and get really deep insights into what's going on in your business. So these reports were specifically geared towards um, human capital management. So human resources, these are, this is data that would be interesting to those, those type of people. Um, but what we've done here is we've effectively, as a power user or, um, or a developer, I got my one box, I fired up Power BI Designer locally, and I said connect to my local entity store DB. Now that I have that connection to that database, I can go, I can start building all these analytic controls using that simple design experience, that simple designer tool. Once I'm happy with the way this looks, I'm happy with the visuals that are surfaced there, I can perhaps even create a mobile version. I simply save that as a local PBIX file, and I associate that with my AX model as an AX resource. So I simply, in the metadata, I create a new X resource. I point it to that PBIX file. And at that point, that Power BI content, that report design, that report data set connection, all of the description of how to um, get that semantic model is now a part of your solution. <coughs> in order to access the report from anywhere in the app to control uh, or secure access, you effectively just create a menu item and point it at that AX resource. At that point, you can start to use this thing locally. We will do lazy deployment so that once you, as a user, try to access that report from the client, we'll go ahead and shoot that up to the embedded service for you, um, and you will be able to interact with the report. So now you have one box where you've got a functional report that is displaying analytical results sourced from your local entity store, and you're happy with the results. The next step is you'll package that up, export your model file, and upload that to LCS, and you're ready to go. You can now produce a sandbox environment with that model or a prod environment with that model, and it will include that Power BI, that those analytical reports that you've just authored using the Power BI desktop. You don't have any additional steps to go out to the service or any other subscription or workspace um, operations on your part. We take care of the workspace allocation behind the scenes. So that is the story. Um, it's not a lot of code. Uh, you do have to bust open Visual Studio because it's the way you go to create AX metadata items. Um, but there is literally no X++ code necessary. And just with that experience, I'd be able to access these reports and give people these analytical solutions that source from their data. Now you can go further. Now with that, that, that experience, I didn't actually have any X++ code in my solution. Hello. Second here.
different one. So I, I've got another sort of sample that we built locally uh, based off of Fleet. Uh, so these these data connections, these aggregated models, these star schemas, um, these are defined in the metadata as aggregate measurements. Um, and what I can do is I can stitch together dimensions and uh, measures to define sort of, hey, here are, here is the views that I'll need to report off of. Um, those things are effectively used to create the schema in the entity store and become um, sort of the data contract for these reports. So this is a solution we built off of Fleet. Um, again, it's got all the interactive capabilities um, just by default built into it. Um, but what I did is you can also use X++ code to add some on-click event handlers. You, as, a, as an implementer, excuse me, can override the default behavior so that if a user actually clicks on a specific control or um, an area of a report or even a collection of reports, um, you can interpret that and send them to the appropriate destination in AX, or sorry, in D365 for operations. So in this case, you would imagine that if I were clicking on Spencer's uh, details, you could potentially take me to uh, an area specifically with Spencer's rental um, rental transactions. Uh, I didn't do that here. I just wanted to showcase that I had handlers and I could take you wherever I want. Uh, besides that, you can also set report filters. You can set ranges on reports. Um, as part of your X++ handler code. So you can imagine behind the scenes, I could be sniffing contextual information about the user and set those filter parameters on this report without the user having any clue. Um, you can prevent them access to the filters so that they can't change those values. Um, so effectively, you can now use X++ code to secure your analytical views. A really powerful thing, um, and I, I have not seen a solution out there, a competitor in the market, that can do the sort of uh, transactional awareness on analytical views that we're capable of today. So we're very impressed with this. We're very happy to get to this point. Um, the, the struggle we're having is um, getting an applications out there to take advantage of. It's very new, um, and we're sort of depending on you folks out there to really give us ways to take advantage of this capability. Um, so that's that. Uh, cool. Let me come back here. Oh, yeah. so let me get through some other big ones. So here's where we're headed next with this analytical um, investment. You're looking at sort of a, a, a standard uh, workspace today. And this is a mock-up. Uh, what you're seeing right now is sort of a mock-up. So you'll see some improvements over this in, in going forward. But this is what our target is for the spring release. Um, and you'll notice that, hey, at the top, I've got these two buttons here. Um, so, sweet, I have access to the summary, which is my standard uh, workspace. Um, and now, because someone has associated a analytical workspace with my operational workspace, I have this alternative tab that just shows up that allows me as an end user to say, yeah, you know what, I, I'm not sure what I want to work on next, so let me play around with the data. So right in, in the user's face, right in, in front of them as an initial experience, they can start their day by getting a broad overview of the data that affects their, their, their work. Um, so we're showcasing these. Here's another example. Um, and this is the with using um, that Power BI report that came from um, the ACM core application. So I'm hurrying through these. I just wanted to make sure you guys had a chance to see some of those examples. And like, like I said, you're going to see a lot more application solutions built on this coming forward, going forward. Um, here's a quick plug for the simplified licensing. Um, and again, it's, it's part of the Dynamics 365 for operations license. Um, so you will not have a separate license to take advantage of the analytical embedded features, embedded analytical features. Uh, sweet. Uh, I, I wanted to quickly tease you on a couple of things really fast here. We have, and we found a lot of success, um, just turning turn back the clock to business documents. Um, so I usually like to 
tell a little story, give a little history of business documents, um, why they looked the way they did in the past, and why we've chosen to uh, provide you with these templates. Uh, so I'll take a quick chance, quick opportunity to, to fill that in. On the left here, you'll see is a standard business document um, in Dynamics AX. This is the customer account statement uh, that is produced by default um, for that application. We expect that folks will have to come in and actually customize these documents to, um, to provide the look uh, that a customer wants. Not just the look, but also isolate the data that's relevant. And you may want to change some of the data elements here or maybe include some custom fields that you have. All of those things require customizations to this business document. This is an SSRS-based solution. So this is something you would have to call in a developer to come in and alter to look the way your customer wants it to look. Um, now, people ask, hey, why, why is it such a, an empty shell of a report in the first place? And I, I have to remind folks, some people are, are you know, part of the, this new generation that don't remember the old days where you know businesses functioned off of pre-printed paper. Um, you would buy from these distributors, uh, is document distribution companies, you know, huge swaths of, of business documents that were already, uh, uh, they were already designed with the customer's uh, desired look and feel. They often had logos printed right into them. And what you would do is you just line up those documents in a printer and the ERP would simply just overlay it with data. So, and these designs were at some part, at some point aligned with those standard templates. So that's that's you know, that's that's a, a while ago. That's back in the '90s. Uh, I, I don't want to feel old, but that has been been a significant shift since then. Um, companies more often than not now use you know standard white paper. Um, they want the design and the logos and the graphics to be printed on this paper, um, and, and it makes sense. I mean, you're, if you run a legal entity, and, and a lot of cases has more than one brand. Um, and so you'll want to perhaps get different color shading, different logos, uh, even different contact information, dependent upon the context of the transaction. So we took a look at those couple of problems, and we said, hey, you know what we can do? We can offer a better story here without disrupting folks that continue to rely on these sort of legacy looks and feel. Um, so we now offer um, what we call modern designs as a way of uh, – further bolstering your ERP solution um, and giving people a, a simpler, more elegant way of, of um, sending records, communicating records externally. So here's one example. Here's another. I think this is the sales. Oh, sorry. This is the purchase order. Um, you know, this is about as good as it gets unless you do some uh, customizations in 2012. And I'll show you how easy it is to sort of change the styling and, and um, D365 for operations. This is the most commonly used report, um, these two, the sales invoice report and the purchase, purchase order. Um, and here's a, a much more elegant view of a sales invoice. This is something that uh, we believe a business will be comfortable moving forward with without, you know, significant overhauls to the standard look and feel of this document. So I just wanted to quickly show you, I, I jumped to a document a while ago. Um, Go ahead and go here. So I showed you a while ago. I I, pop, I, I generated a it was a, a customer confirmation report. It was gray. Um, it wasn't quite as elegant as that one you just saw there. Um, and that's because right now I'm, I'm just using the out of box. We we give you a default uh, sort of style for our modern designs. However, you can come in here and affect these things however you'd like. Um, you can create a, you know, any number of brand definitions that make sense depending upon how many brands are covered by your legal entity. And you can do things like set color schemes, define uh, contact information, you supply the logos. I'm going to go ahead and delete this one. This is the one. The one that has uh, the legal entity brand ID is, is the active by default. So I'll go ahead and change this one and make it now the that works. Oh, 
Okay. So now I've got a different brand that I, all I did was I switched the brand ID and I said, Hey, kill the other one, make this one active. Um, this one's got a couple of things associated with it. I got some colors, um, blah. So you, you saw, and I'm just going to go back to that same place where, let's see if it'll work. Oh, refresh it. Oh, I'm still there. Uh, so I'm using that same customer. I'm going to go ahead and print that same report again. Oh. And you'll see it's, it's, it's a very different look than the original grayscale. Um, and again, I can... I can define any number of these brands. I can add code, select the appropriate brand at runtime so that, you know, I produce a document that is appropriate given the recipient. Um, so this is another thing. This, this is totally configurable. Um, we're, we're effectively trying to empower um, admins to make changes to reports without having to call up their, uh, their, their ISV uh, or VAR to, you know, do a major investment in their deployment. Um, again, there's no disruption. I, I don't have to disrupt services or any report deployment. I just change uh, sort of the active brands or the brand definitions for that matter. Okay, so that was that. Yeah, so two minutes. There's no way I can get through this section. Uh, I believe you guys have access to the deck. Uh, this is an important thing to go through if you have time, you're interested in just understanding where to get started. This kind of puts you on a roadmap as dependent upon what type of solution you're 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 looking to create um, and there's different types um, I, I kind of quickly went through just the most basic analytical solution uh, where all you're doing is providing maybe some, um, some analytical workspaces or reports um, but you can go further and actually creating uh, full-on workspaces with some X++ plus uh, extensions uh, with real-time links sorry links into uh, detail records um, or you can go even further where you're integrating your own existing data warehouse. Um, and we have some, some guidance here just in terms of how data moves. Uh, but most relevant is for this audience is this slide here. Um, and this is just offering you some useful links to find out more details. Um, and to potentially get a hold or provide feedback if you have some asks or recommendations for enhancements going forward. These are the way to reach the, the folks who are making the decisions. So you have that. And with that, uh, wow, 159 on the dot. Uh, I think I have time for maybe one or two questions. Uh, cool, I have a question here from Martin Brown. Uh, sorry, Martin. Uh, hi, TJ. How are those reimagined shipped? Are they to be standard shipped? So, great question, Martin. Uh, I gave you a link here on how to obtain those modern report designs. Um, so, yeah, you effectively go to LCS. You download this site asset, and it's a model file. You import the model file, um, and you deploy the reports. It's, it's pretty much ready to go. Um, the last step is simply selecting the report in print management. Um, but that this uh, this article here speaks to the experience. I, I will be updating it soon. It uh, speaks to Plat Update three. Um, it's gotten much easier in Plat Update four. So um, I will sh we'll, you'll see updated guides there soon. Um, and the last question is: the, Are these brand documents, these brand templates, available in the current release? Absolutely. You can use these. Uh, as of Plat Update 2. And I think that's about it. Janice? All right. Thank you, TJ. All right, audience, I'd like to bring your attention to a link that I just posted in the messages panel. That's a link to a short survey for this web conference, and we ask that you please take a moment before logging out to access it. We hope that you found today's information helpful, and if you enjoyed today's web conference or have feedback on how we can provide you with a better event, this is your chance to let us know. The survey scores are on a scale from 1 to 5, with 5 being the highest score possible.
And with that, that's going to conclude today's Infopedia web conference. Attendees can access the web conference recording via a link that will be delivered within three to five business days post-conference. I'd like to extend a big thank you to our presenter, TJ, and thank you, audience, for logging in and joining us today. You may now disconnect from the broadcast. <laughs>